Number five, thiazide. Thiazides are diuretics. They are hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide work, they didn't give thiazide. They give you patient is taking <coughs> thiazide. That means diuretics. And what is diuretics are doing here? Removing the body extra fluid is a diuretics. And what would you monitor? Whenever you give diuretics, you're losing blood pressure. Remember, the word is hypovolemia. Any questions come? Hypovolemia, monitor blood pressure. Hypervolemia, the blood pressure is going to be high. Hypovolemia, the blood pressure is going to be low. So patient is losing a lot of fluid from the body because you're giving diuretics. Can be a Lasix, can be a thiazide. But they gave you the word thiazide. Thiazide means are diuretics. And when you give diuretics, what do you monitor your patient here for blood pressure, low blood pressure, hypotension, and the last word, you lose a lot of potassium. When you're giving Lasix, you're giving thiazide, what are we losing? Potassium. Maybe your answer could be that what do we monitor? We monitor potassium. What do you monitor your patient when you're giving thiazide are the blood pressure. What do you tell the patient when you're giving thiazide are uh, get up slowly. And what do you get up slowly to prevent what? Orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic hypotension. Now, if you stop it, one minute. I think again with number five, thiazide. Everyone is okay? Hydrochlorothiazide, thiazide, what are you monitoring? Blood pressure. What maybe patient is having here? Dizziness. What do you teach your CNA or UAP? Your patient is in hydrochlorothiazide is to help the patient because patient would feel dizziness. What do you tell the patient? Get up slowly and you walk with the patient. Maybe that's your answer in teaching. Iron, iron you're giving. How do you give iron with vitamin C? What is the best in vitamin C is orange juice, tomato juice. And with vitamin C, it says why? Because the juice is good in vitamin C. And also for better absorption. Number seven, if you are giving liquid iron, use the straw. And also to prevent staining from the stool. Why? Because it causes constipation. And so add there, cause constipation and prevent from uh, staining the teeth. You're using the straw. Number eight, question may be, you have a patient with burn and doctor has ordered, underlined at the, at the end, silverdine cream. And there's another cream is silvadiazine. Those are the two cream. Which patient we are using silverdine cream for burn patient? And there may be order, doctor has ordered to apply silverdine cream. What do you do before you apply the cream? Clean it. Every time before you're putting any new cream, you must clean the older one. So what do you do? And what are we using to clean is the normal saline. Normal saline is good for irrigation, for the wound care, and normal saline is used to wash the area before you are going to apply the Cream. Another thing I want to add here for normal saline, how long your bottle should left open in any question. No more than 24 hours. And you may have, a, you walked in and you have, is the bottle normal saline which is open more than 24 hours and has 48 hours. Can you use that? No. Discard the bottle. There's no date. Discard the bottle. There's no date means you don't know when it was open. You went to do the treatment and there's a question. You have a normal saline bottle is open, but there is no date. What do you do? Discard it, take another bottle. All your bottle must be dated. Now you're going to have a license once you pass your board and you're going to work. Everything they expect you to know. So all your bottle, insulin, multiple vial, normal saline, you've got to put the date. So remember, any questions, multiple vial must be dated. If you have a single dose, fine, but you have multiple dose and you may be using more than for longer time, like an in insulin. And sometimes insulin hasn't been used more than 
30 days. That means it may not be good. So if you don't have date, how do we know how long are we going to use? So remember, date is important. No date, you're going to discard the normal saline. Next one, I will move on. Number nine, antibiotic. Reaction, we all know rashes, but I want to rem remind you the word hives and urticaria. Those are the good wording to know. And at the last it says, is, and also remember, reaction. What happens if you are allergic to something? What happens? Your body goes into what? Anaphylactic <coughs> reaction. Don't forget that. Even we are seeing rashes. Sometimes maybe what is allergy can cause? You can go into what? Anaphylactic reaction. And at the last, if you are taking oral contraceptive medication, what happened with antibiotic? It's not working. And you got to teach the person to use another method. So remember that too. Patient is taking oral contraceptive. Doctor has started tetracycline. What do you teach patient? They must use some other method because it lowered the effect of oral contraceptive. Number 10, very important, we all know the toxin. What is digoxin is your cardiac medication. What is the first sign of digoxin, toxicity or digoxin side effect are? Anorexia, nausea and vomiting. Anorexia, nausea and vomiting, blurry vision. Vision can be halos around the eyes, yellow halos they are seen. That means the eyes is affected, any wording they give you for eyes, yes. Which is the early sign of digoxin toxicity is anorexia. Patient is not feeling appetite and they can have feeling nausea and vomiting. Very important is bradycardia. What pulse do we check when we're giving digoxin? Apical pulse. Any question when you're discharging patient going home, what do you teach them? Then you teach them to check radial pulse. When they're going home, radial pulse. When we are checking, apical pulse. Remember in your teaching question, patient is going home with digoxin. What do you tell them? Check the pulse daily, but what pulse? Radial pulse. And I will be talking later on, where is the apical pulse? Later when I will move on. But yes, we all should know where is your apical pulse in picture and where is the apical pulse, okay? So bradycardia, hypokalemia, vision problem, monitor apical pulse, hold the pulse below 60. And when patient is going home, check the radial pulse, check the radial pulse. So everyone is okay, level 0.5 to 2.0. I've done earlier, highlight the word. Antidote for digoxin toxicity is digivine. Hypokalemia, very important, we mm -hmm. must know. I want to repeat here, and I'm telling you, everyone should know these drugs. Digoxin, and they give you a question. In your question, patient came in, and patient says he felt dizzy, anorexia, and patient pulse rate they're showing on assessment is very low and what would be the toxicity, and they'll give you a couple of the drugs. So whenever you see bradycardia, <coughs> patient feel dizziness, anorexia, vision problem, that means patient is in what drug? Digoxin. And they might throw a couple of drugs and say, what drug is causing the patient? So remember, digoxin, anorexia, early sign, vision, later sign. Why do we check the pulse rate? Because it lowers the heart rate, and that is called bradycardia. Any question, they're showing pulse rate is going down, patient is taking what drug? You're looking into uh, digoxin. Everyone should know normal level. What is the antidote is here? Digibine. Anti-dysarrhythmic or anti-arrhythmic medication. What is the meaning, anti-arrhythmic? The heartbeat are not good. They don't have normal heartbeat. And what is the word is called? Arrhythmia. And what medication, there are a lot of drugs. I have only here one drug, is Calderon. 
and Cardurone or any time when patient has poor heartbeat or very fast heartbeat. That what is the word is called when the heartbeat is high? Tachycardia. And patient has tachydysarrhythmia, you are giving drug to lower and bringing the heartbeat to the normal condition. And that is called dysarrhythmia. Underline the word irregular to regular. And whenever you are giving cardiac medication, what does it cause the patient here? Underline the word <coughs> hypotension. And get up slowly. Very important, we are nurses. Mostly your questions are going to be, all your, most of your drugs are lowering the heart rate, lowering what? The blood pressure. Whether you're giving diuretics, you're giving blood pressure medication, all of them, what are they lowering here? The blood pressure. And what does it cause when your blood pressure is lower is orthostatic hypotension. What do we prevent as a nurses are orthostatic hypotension. How do you prevent that orthostatic hypotension? Wonderful. Dangling the <coughs> feet. What do we do? Don't get up all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, when you get up your patient, what will happen? The blood pressure drop. And if you didn't give time and you get, grab them and say, let's go for a walk, the patient may be fainted. Why? Because they're laying in a bed. They're taking this medication and they can go into what? Orthostatic hypotension. Many questions on orthostatic hypotension you will see and what do you do remember the word dangling their feet raise their head of the bed let them sit down for a while and then you walk your patient now they didn't give you drug but they said patient is in bed bed rest for two months and doctor has ordered to ambulate this patient today what do you do before you ambulate your patient? Maybe answer, check the name band, check the order, explain the procedure, and answer is dangle the feet. So which one are you going to pick up? Dangle the feet. Why? Yes, it is all all right. None of the answers looks wrong. But what is the priority we are looking here to prevent them from Fall. So remember, any time when you're picking up any answers and you pick up straight answer, patient has pain, give pain medication. That will not be your right answer. Why? You have to assess. You've got to do before you go and give your medication. So wherever we think we're doing the best, just pick up the straight answer, read other answers. Make sure what is the other choice you can do to prevent that. So that can be on your question with your blood pressure, antiarrhythmic medication. Antipsychotic medication is thoracine. Underline that. And there are other medication, Haldol, number B you have. And what do you monitor when you're giving Haldol and thoracine? In Haldol, it says monitor behavior. What is antipsychotic means for behavior? What is the meaning? Patient may be hitting, shouting, screaming, some behavior. And what are you correcting here? The patient behavior. Now, see how the wording is? You know what Haldol is, mm -hmm. what Thorazine is, and they're giving you a question, and they're saying you're giving Haldol and Thorazine. What do you monitor your patient? Number one, everyone remember these are psychotic medication. What are we assessing a patient for behavior? Then we will move on. In the first line, we call the word EPS. I'm sure you guys have heard that. EPS is side effect of the medication. And there are a lot of side effects. But for your, this test, at least main co common wording, we got to know. And that is called extra pyramidal symptom. EPS is what? Extra pyramidal symptom. They also have orthostatic hypertension. The meaning EPS extra pyramidal, like Parkinson patient, they are shaking. Are we clear? So what is EPS is? They start having involuntary movement. So you guys can write down EPS is involuntary movement. So EPS is involuntary movement. And what is Thorazine and Haldol? They are psychotic medication. What are we monitoring patients here for behavior? 
And what do you monitor side effect? Everyone should know EPS. What is EPS? Extra pyramidal symptom, which is called involuntary movement. What medication do you give? Another question. Patient is, doctor has ordered Thorazine. And Thorazine with, you have Cogentin. And they're asking you, why does the doctor has ordered these two medication, your answer would be thorazine you're giving for behavior and potentin you're giving to stop EPS. Are we clear? So before patient goes in EPS, doctor is stopping those side effects and they combine two drugs together. So your question is why do we give the two medications together, which is cogentin and thorazine, to stop EPS. Everyone is okay? And so you do have it here, is in there, uh, antipsychotic thorazine, EPS word, and in the second line, you have prevent EPS. What is EPS? Involuntary movement. So if you see, like in nursing home patients, we used to give a lot of Haldol, a lot of other medication, and you have seen patients are shaking and their tongues is going out. That's a EPS, side effect of the drug. So now what the, we are doing here, we are combining two drugs together. So patient will not have EPS. Everyone is all right? So what is EPS is? Extra pyramidal symptom. And why do you give them to stop EPS? Next is cocaine withdrawal is danger is contracting hepatitis due to sharing the needle and watch for intense craving. So can we do that? Next is number 14, is Narcan. We all know what is Narcan, antidote. And what is antidote for? You have, must have heard for morphine or opiates. And when you have side effect of opiates, what do you monitor? So what happened when you're giving morphine? You monitor, you all remember that, monitor respiration. And what does it do? It lowers the respiratory rate. But when the respiratory rate is lower, they give narcan. And what will happen now? Your respiration is improving. And what else would improve? Morphine was making them less painful, and they're not feeling pain, they're more sleeping, and your answer would be patient is more alert. Patient is complaining for pain and respiration would increase. See how questions are going to be. Not why do you give and now Narcan, they may not ask what is, why do we give Narcan? It's an antidote. But what will happen after Narcan you're giving? You are a nurse, aren't you going to monitor respiration is increasing? Are you monitoring for pain because you are not giving morphine and you're giving antidote? Are we clear? So what is morphine is for pain? What is antidote is the narking. And what do you monitor? Respiration. Rate and rhythm. Assess level of pain. Must be assessed level of pain because you are not giving morphine and patient is getting more aware, more alert, and patient would feel pain. Number 15. I will be going on a separate page, insulin, but let's highlight a few things here because insulins are going to be important. First thing is your rapid acting insulin. And at the end, very important word is give the tray within 15 minutes. When you're giving this insulin, your food, food is very important. When we give insulin, because you're giving insulin and you don't give patient food, they're going to be in hypoglycemia. So you, your job is, as a nurse, make sure patient is getting trained. Things can happen. Sometimes the kitchen didn't set the tray. Sometimes CNA is busy. Maybe she start doing something else and your tray is still sitting and you gave insulin. What will happen to your patient? They're going into hypoglycemia. So they may ask you, what is your responsibility when we are giving insulin to make sure your patient gets their food? Are we clear? And number two thing is, when they give you a question, rapid acting. They're not going to give you the word rapid acting. They're going to say, doctor has ordered and underline the word Lassipro, and which is called Humalog and Novolog. You've got to know a little bit wording here. Humalog and Novolog are rapid acting insulin. 
And what do you monitor here? Because it works within 15 minutes. Now, if you, they give you 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and you pick up 30 minutes, your answer would be wrong. When do you give this tray here? Within 15 minutes. Because by the time 30 minutes, patient is already hypoglycemic. See how I'm giving you ideas, and you got to make sure you read through. The insulin are Lacipro and Humalog, or Aspart or Novolog. So Novolog and Humalog are rapid acting insulin. Very important, it works very fast. And within 15 minutes, your patient must get the tray and must eat. Number two, short acting insulin comes your regular insulin. Now even if say Humalog, Novolog, read our word. R at the end is regular. Are we clear? So that is your regular insulin. When do we give the food here? When do we give the food here? Within 30 minutes. Because they're going to start hypoglycemia, and but your tray must be for regular insulin within 30 minutes. Patient must eat. What is regular insulin is? Clear. And how do you give regular insulin? How do we give regular insulin? Two ways we can give. Sub-Q, I want you to add on the side, sub-Q, and IV. When do you give IV? DKA, we said earlier. When do you give sub-Q? What is sub-Q? When do we use regular insulin? Sub-Q. On sliding scale. I want you to write down the word sliding scale. What is the meaning sliding scale is? The doctor has ordered a scale and you've got to read that scale. And I will write it down few things here. And what do we check here? Blood sugar. Doctor ordered to check blood sugar before meals, AC and HS. And doctor said, after your blood sugar, if your blood sugar level is 200 to 250, I'm just giving you an example, three units, you're giving which insulin? Regular insulin. If your blood sugar 250 to 300, you're giving four units. Now 300 to 400, you're giving five units. 400 to 450, or 500, 450, I'll say here, is six unit. But your question comes, your patient blood sugar is 800. What do you do now? You don't have a scale. Do not go back on the scale. Call the doctor. Now there may be answer, give six unit, and then call the doctor. No, you don't have the scale for that, so we are not giving that insulin. Everyone is okay? Sliding scale, some people's sugar runs very high. Even they're getting in the morning NPH insulin, but sliding scale before they're eating another meal. So think about you're checking blood sugar, and their sugar is already 400. After they eat food, their sugar is going to be more higher. So we have a sliding scale, and you give a sliding scale, to make sure we are lowering the blood sugar. So when do we give this sliding scale is remember when you have a doctor's order for sliding scale and you follow that insulin. And what insulin you're giving on sliding scale? Regular insulin. What insulin are you giving when your patient is on DKA? What insulin we are giving DKA is regular. Very good. And how do we give on that? IV. IV. Another question. Patient is admitted, type 2. You have type 2 patient. And what is type 2 is? Oral. Remember? Type 2 is what? They're taking oral pills. And what is oral pills? Maybe I will have you highlight when I move on. And they may give you, patient is type 2 diabetic. Patient is taking type 2 is oral glucophage. And patient is scheduled for surgery. 
and patient is going to be NPO. Number one, everyone remember, type two patient, they are taking oral. Patient is going on, they may <coughs> take also insulin slide, but mostly they are on oral. Type one has to have insulin order. Now, type two patient is going for surgery, and patient is going to be NPO. What would you do, patient who's going to be NPO, and you cannot give glucophage? How would you manage their sugar? Your answer would be on sliding scale with what? Regular insulin. Everyone is okay? How do you manage their sugar would be? By insulin, giving them, and how? By sliding scale. So patient is NPO. You will check the blood sugar four times a day or five times, what doctor has ordered. And when sugar is going up, we are giving them insulin on sliding. We cannot give them oral because they're going for surgery. So anytime patient is going for surgery and you cannot give them oral, what do we do? We do the sliding scale and we give them the insulin. And these kind of questions you may come across. So I'm breaking it down so you know when your DKA question is there, not all the time is ketones. Think maybe there and so what do you do though immediately you're giving insulin yes what do you monitor yes you're going to monitor the ketone what is dka patient is going into metabolic acidosis are we clear patient is going for surgery you're doing the sliding scale and giving what kind of insulin we are giving them our regular insulin next is and it's clear this is the insulin is clear Next is intermediate, number C, which is called NPH, and they use the word lenti. So highlight that, and also I want, that's very important that we all know these insulin questions are. NPH insulin. NPH is intermediate insulin. Intermediate means it doesn't work right away. They're not going to ask you the question for tray. Tray question would be basically your regular insulin and your fast-acting insulin. NPH, even you give a little later because it takes a longer time. And this is the one is cloudy insulin, NPH. It's called intermediate and lengthy. And what would you be highlighting here? is third line, if you go, it says NPX 730, that mix, but peak hours, they will ask you peak hours. <coughs> what is the meaning, peak hours, when is there going to be hypoglycemia? So they are saying, what is the peak hour of <coughs> NPX insulin? Your answer will be six to 12 hours. So their peak is, they're going into hypoglycemia. Another wording is, how long it will take them to go in hypoglycemia, but the wording is peak hours. What is the peak is here is 6 to 12 hours. So peak hours is 6 to 12. And if given in the morning, in the morning, 7.30 p.m., 3.30 to, and another word, highlight the word, around 3.30 to 7.30, you're going to monitor for hypoglycemia, if you're giving in the morning. So if they give you a question, you give NPH insulin in the morning, 8 a.m. What time your patient has hypoglycemia? They gave you 10 a.m. here, and they gave you 2 p.m. here, they gave you 9 p.m. here, and they gave 11 p.m. So your best answer would be closest to three. Go this way. Don't go back, because that time patient is already has what? hypoglycemia. So what is NPH insulin is? Intermediate insulin. How long does it take to affect here? 6 to 12 hours. What time do you monitor hypoglycemia? Always remember, go first near about 6. Don't ever go on 12. But if they're asking the how long will it take it? Yes, peak hours are 6 to 12. But if you didn't have 2 o'clock, and they only had 4 o'clock, then you go on 4 o'clock, because that you still 9 o'clock would be very late. Patient is already has hypoglycemia. I will tell you, everyone should know your insulin, and that's why I'm reviewing that, is long-acting insulin, 
is your intermediate insulin is what? NPH. How long NPH peak hours are? Everyone remember this is a cloudy <coughs> insulin and peak hours are 6 to 12. And later, if you will memorize more, around 3.30 to 7.30. Long-acting insulin is ultra lenty. And number E, we should know lentis insulin. This is the insulin do not mix. And they have no peak and no hypoglycemia. Now, mostly lentis insulin given at the night time. And it very slowly, it works. Patient will not, whether they're eating or not, it just keep their sugar level controlled, but they're not going in hypoglycemia. Are we clear? So with this very long acting insulin is lentis, and you cannot mix it with other insulin. So that covers up your insulin question. I will go on another package and have you highlight. So that way, I want you guys are very good with your DKA questions, very good some of your insulin. Now I want to move on on number 16, oral hypoglycemic agent. That is type 2 patient are diabenase, tolinase, and glucotrol, underline the word glucophage. Glucophage is also called metformin and abendia, actose. They are given for type 2. And what does it mean? Why do we get insulin from pancreas? And what cells in pancreas are, underline the word beta cells. That's important, we all know. Beta cells in the pancreas are, that means your body, type 2 people have some insulin. That's why they don't have going in ketoacidosis. Type 1, they're also controlled by, only by what? Insulin. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. So where, where do you get insulin from pancreas? Any question when I will move on on GI and I say patient has pancreatitis, what do you monitor patient with pancreatitis? Number one, you've got to monitor their blood sugar because insulin is coming from where? The pancreas. And what cells are in the pancreas are the beta cells. Number 17, I will move on on heparin. Heparin is your blood, uh, anticoagulant, blood thinner. And you can give heparin, highlight the word sub-Q and IV. You cannot give IM. If they give you IM order, you're not giving IM. You only give sub-Q. Sometimes they throw the question, doctor has ordered heparin to give IM. What do you do? You question the doctor. Are we clear? That means they are checking whether you know heparin can be given IM or not. So how do we give heparin? sub -Q, and you can give them IV. What do we monitor for patient PTT? Antidote protamine sulfate. Tumidine you're giving by mouth, and you're giving PT. You monitor PT and add their INR, and antidote is vitamin K. I want to add here INR. INR is if it is high, more than two, two to three is normal, but if you have seven INR or 11, that's very high. And what do you need to give them is your antidote. And what is the antidotes are vitamin K. So what is tumidine you're giving? Oral. What is tumidine you're monitoring? P-T-I-N-R. If patient is bleeding, then what would it, the risk is, an antidote you're giving for what is tumidine? Vitamin K. And I want you to add there is on vitamin, uh, on tumidine, no green vegetables, no green anything. Patient is taking home tumidine, what do you teach them? Any green veggies, anything green vegetable, they're high in vitamin K. So you cannot, they should not take it and also follow-up appointment. They must do the lab because these medications are given when patient is having a cardiac problem, clotting problem, and blood thinner need to be given regular basis. Patient is going home, what would you, your questions are going to be teaching question. What would you teach the patient? Make sure they come follow-up for the lab and, and avoid and continue medication as the doctor prescribed. So Cumidine is given PO. And Fragamin is also your blood thinner. Sub-Q only. There may be a question. Doctor has ordered to give Fragamin IV. 
question. You cannot give IV. Only which one is given IV? Heparin. Everyone is okay? So make sure you guys highlight the word heparin is given IV. Now you are giving <coughs> question with your blood thinner. I will be, I'm giving you your next answers on your blood thinner or if patient is taking a blood thinner, what do you monitor? We all know what do we monitor? Bleeding. Now your question is, patient is on Humidine and doctor has ordered white test and white test come positive. What this meaning? Patient is bleeding. What do you do? Notify. There will not be answer, monitor bleeding. There will be answer, you are looking in patient and you are assessing. Patient has hematuria. What is hematuria? <laughs> Blood in the urine. urine. Okay, so that's a sign of bleeding. Patient is having hemoptysis. What is hemoptysis? Hemoptysis word. Blood in the sputum. Hematemesis word is vomiting. So they gave you the word hemoptysis. Hemoptysis means patient is spitting up the blood. See, remember, your question will never be, you're giving Coumadin, what do you monitor? Bleeding, no. You have a patient who is on Coumadin, and you see bruising. What is bruising up? Acamosis, sign of bleeding. Are you going to notify? Yes. White test come positive, are you going to notify? Yes. Patient is having hematuria. Patient is having hematemesis, vomiting. Anywhere your question, I'm not going to be straight. What do you monitor? Bleeding. No, they are giving you assessment. And what do you observe in your patient you need to notify? Number 18 is antiplatelet medication. These all of them are. And also, number 18, I want you to highlight the word aspirin, A-S-A, -A, aspirin. What is aspirin is? Antiplatelet. What else do we use aspirin? Cardiac. Card yes, and that's for platelet purpose for the bleeding, okay? Because you don't want the blood, as a blood thinner. And pain, very good, and what else? You can do, use antipyretic, antianalgesic, fever, and what else? I wanted to hear the main function of aspirin. Anticoagulant reset, antipyretic reset, let me remind you is what? Anti-inflammatory medication. Write down that, anti-inflammatory. NSAID, remember the word non-steroidal, anti-inflammatory medication. We must know aspirin is anti-inflammatory. I will be talking about diseases anti-inflammatory. What is anti-inflammatory disease you remember? Arthritis. Hmm? arthritis, not a common arthritis. We have rheumatoid, arth not arthritis, but you are close, rheumatoid arthritis. What is rheumatoid arthritis is? Inflammatory disease. Patient says, I'm having rheumatoid arthritis and my pain is really bad. And I went to the doctor, but doctor gave me aspirin. What would be your answer? Because it's not given for pain. Why is it given? To reduce the inflammation. See how the answers would be? And I want every important wording what you can see. Rheumatoid arthritis is the arthritis, is inflammatory disease. And remember, it's a immune system disease. What isolation are you going to put this patient? When you have immune system low, reverse isolation. I want you to add there with aspirin, so you will click. Any question come. Why do we give aspirin also to reduce inflammation. Are we clear? And for pain, you know, for coagulants, you know, 
And what is same time I want you to add there? Patient is admitted with rheumatoid. Your questions are going to be, you have two patients, which patient you will put it in there, which patient you have. So you got to have a knowledge more around so you have some idea. So I'm trying to throw as much as I think you will be able to read good question and you will be able to understand. So what is rheumatoid arthritis is anti-inflammatory disease. What is the side effect of aspirin? Mm -hmm. Very good, GI bleeding. And what else? Affect the hearing. Write down that. Maybe another question. Mother says, when I was pregnant, I took a lot of aspirin. And my baby is born and doesn't respond to any much of the noise. Maybe affected the baby. See how we got to connect more questions here? What do you assess? Bleeding. Somebody said bleeding. Very good. And it affects the hearing problem. Any question that? Maybe attach. Look, you read your question. And how do you give aspirin? Anything which is causing bleeding, you must take it with food to prevent what? GI bleeding. Another question. Patient has ulcer. Patient says, I've been taking aspirin. They shouldn't be taking more aspirin. Why? What does ulcer can lead to? Bleeding. bleeding. And why you're taking aspirin can lead to more? Bleeding. See how we got to connect it? So remember, aspirin, simple drug, but a lot of questions can be coming through the aspirin for monitoring side effects of mon uh, aspirin. Where can you give aspirin is, yes, for pain is good and very important for rheumatoid arthritis <coughs> for anti and We have a lot of diseases, anti-inflammatory. So sometimes you're not giving aggressive medication. A lot of patients, when they have rheumatoid arthritis, instead of giving all those very aggressive drugs, they start maybe with small dose of aspirin because it reduces their inflammation. And I will remind you one thing. When you have inflammation, is not only is affecting the joints. What happened to rheumatoid arthritis patient? It affects their whole body system. They will get contracted or maybe deformity. But what is the more problem? Their life. They can go blind. I will move on when I will move on on rheumatoid arthritis in juvenile rheumatoid arthritis in children. They can go blind. Your answer would be, what do you monitor them for blindness? What do you monitor patient with rheumatoid arthritis are is inflammatory disease. What is the meaning here? It can damage their eyes, their heart, their kidneys. They can die with renal failure. They can die with the lung problem, not because of the joint, because the inflammation is spreading all over the blood vessels. Everyone is okay, rheumatoid arthritis is. We learned a little bit rheumatoid, so at least you guys ha have idea, is it's an anti-inflammatory disease, and what medication we can give here? Aspirin. Next is number 19, thrombolytic medication. What is thrombolytic means? And they're dissolving the clot. The other one was is preventing the clot. This one is what? The clot is dissolving. The clot is there. And what medication is given? You have in the first line, it says streptokinase, and it says dissolve the clot. So highlight the wording. A streptokinase and chiclet and 10 case, but everyone should know streptokinase. And what do you monitor? It's a blood thinner, dissolving the clot, and given IV. Which patient you will give? Underline the word DVT patient. Patient comes with pulmonary embolism. Patient comes with MI. You give them IV and within six hours. That means immediately patient comes in, you want to have the circulation and you give them immediately. They can, it depends on the doctor. Sometimes they can use heparin, sometimes they're using is what is a streptokinase. Streptokinase is a drug you're giving for when there is a clot. And DVT is what? Deep venous thrombosis. How do we get DVT? 
How do we get DVT? DVT comes before DVT. Remember, I said your questions are prevention. So everybody is good to know. We all know what is DVT. There's a clot, right? How does this clotting come here? Maybe some poor circulation. Can you prevent DVT? How? Very good. Okay. You have idea? DVT is coming from where? The first come thrombophlebitis. I will be talking about that. Very important for all your exam. DVT, because what are we preventing? You're getting your patient after surgery. They had mastectomy or they have hysterectomy or they had a C-section. Mother comes in. She's laying in a bed. She starts thrombophlebitis, and after thrombophlebitis, she has a DVT. We got to learn to prevent this problem. And some of you said, yes, stocking, you can use them. You can use, what is the best thing is here? Ambulation. Get them out of bed as soon as possible. And their exercise. I will be talking more and more, and by the end of the, all our lectures, you will all know by heart. So. Thrombophlebitis comes when we are not ambulating. Yes, poor circulation. Maybe your blood is clotting later, <coughs> quickly bleeds. Maybe cause quickly clotting. Maybe blood disorders, maybe circulation order. But very, very important as a nurse's questions are ambulation. And DVT, when you have, that means it's a clot. Now, when you see the difference between both question and patient, what do we remember? DVT is already clot formation. Thrombophlebitis, you prevent before patient is going in DVT. When your patient has DVT, you're going to give bed rest. You're not going to go ambulation. What do you give them here is the blood thinner. And what medication can be given here? Maybe a streptokinase, maybe heparin, depends on the doctor. But yes, pulmonary, I will be talking pulmonary embolism, DVD, all that we got to know for your test. Pulmonary embolism, clot there. And that you want to clear. Again, when you are giving patient thrombolytic medication or heparin, what are we monitoring? Bleeding. Next is, I will go on eye medication. Glycoma patient. What is a glycoma means is pressure is very high. What is the pressure in the eye we call intraocular pressure. What is a normal pressure in the eye is 10 to 21. Till 22 is okay. So I'll say 10 to 22 normal pressure. Now what is in glycoma is the fluid we all need to remember eyes have a fluid. And what are the fluids we have in the eye? Is aqueous humor and vitreous humor. You guys have learned that. And aqueous humor is in the anterior chamber. So we must know is a fluid. And some question, what do you do when you're giving eye drops? It's lowering the eye pressure. And what happened? The fluid is built up a lot. Any question on glycoma? What does glycoma lead to? Blindness. Very common diabetic patient. And you must teach them for eye drops. Even they're getting eye drops, they can still fall and problem with ambulation. Timolol is a medication. Oral word when we see is called beta blocker. What is it inhibiting? Underline the word formation. It's not building more is fluid, which is aqueous humor. Side effect, hypotension, and I want you to add there, check the pulse rate. Anytime oral word is in the cardiac medication, beta blockers. That's also your blood pressure medication. So this eye drops came from the same category, is called beta blockers. And what does it lower? It lowers the heart rate. Pilocarpine. What is pilocarpine is? Constricting the pupil and also relieving the pressure. You do not give atropine. Underline the word atropine is second line mitriatics that dilate. I want you to add on the side, your glycoma medications are called my 
aortic, myotic, that constraint. Mydriatics are dilated. In your question, if they get patient has glycoma and they ordered atropine, you can't use it because atropine is mydriatic. So what medication we use here? Myotic. And what is myotic does? Drain the fluid, is constricting. And what is the effect of mydriatics are dilating. So we finish a little bit your two eye drops here. Very important, we all just go through the medication. Number 22, angiotensin. That's your blood pressure medication. And it's called, angio, it converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, underline the word COSAR. Is your loss, uh, loss 10 is antihypertensive medication. What do you monitor? Highlight. Everyone should know COSA. I want everyone to know that's a pril, it's a angiotensin medication. COSA. COSA is your blood pressure medication. And what do you monitor patient here? Hypotension. They feel fatigue. And also they feel with the low blood pressure, dizziness, foul position, dangling, we said already, and you highlight that word is COSA. Now, I want you to say here, angiotensin II are your blood pressure medication. Tricyclic medication are your depression medication, antidepressant, alveol, and de for depression, how long does it take to work? Two, two, it takes a longer time. Patient says, I've been taking medication, but it's not helping me. Then you tell the patient, it takes about longer time, two to four weeks to work. What do you monitor when your patient is getting better? Suicidal. Antibiotic, tetracycline. If they give you, patient is given tetracycline. Do not give them in pregnancy. Avoid, and children, underline that, and avoid the sun. And why you do not give them in pregnancy in children? Because it affects the bone. Everyone should know very common drug, antibiotic, that's a tetracycline. What do you teach them when they're going out to cover their skin? That means protect them from skin. Now, next drug, aminoglucoside. What is aminoglucosides are? Anti Biotic. These are strong antibiotics, are. And in there it says, and the word of your medication is going to be myosin and sin. You don't have the name of medication here, but you're saying myosin and sin. For example, gara myosin. I will write down here is gara. Myosin. So remember, what is the ending word here? Sin, myosin, garamyosin. Venco myosin. Number three, genta myosin. So remember one wording. You that is why it's very important to know the ending of the medication. Sometimes you can't remember whole list of drugs, but all your sin and myosin are what? Aminoglucoside. They may not throw the word aminoglucoside and they may give you a question and saying patient is taking gentamicin. That means patient is taking what drug? Aminoglucoside. So we need to know as a nurse. But what do you monitor? Mm -hmm. Autotoxicity. What is autotoxicity means is hearing. Nephro, I said earlier, word, nephro means is what? Kidney. And what do you monitor in kidney? BUN and creatinine level. They will not give you any wording. And they will just say, patient is on garamycin, and they give you all the labs, answer, and they might say, what do you notify? You got to see creatinine level. It's not normal, you got to notify the physician. Everyone is okay what drugs are? Myosin at the end, what are those called are? Is gentamicin, garamycin, vancomycin, ending word. You remember ending word. And what do you monitor here are maybe patient finish two weeks of garamycin. What do you monitor patient before you start, after you start, 
hearing test, maybe the hearing test answer. So remember, autotoxicity word may not be completely there, nephrotoxicity word may not be there, but they are going to see if you know what is nephro means and what is auto means, hearing test and the kidney lab work, creatinine and BUN. Next, underneath in number 25, when you're giving aminoglucosides, what do we need to monitor here? is blood test, which is called P and trough. Underneath that, very important, we all need to write down the word P and trough. What is peak means? You're drawing the blood for your patient. Peak means 30 or 60 minutes after. Underline the word peak means after you finish antibiotic. And trough means before you're going to hang the antibiotic, 30 minutes. You're going to monitor your lab work. Everyone is okay, peak and trough. Peak means after, trough means before you're going to hang your antibiotic. Lab must come within 30 minutes and draw the blood. What are they checking here? The level of the medication. So you got to check the level of the medication. So number 25 is peak and trough. Next one, I will move on and establish effectiveness of the drug. Number 26. Are we going 11.30? Is fine for you guys, sir? Yes. Okay, let me continue for some more time. Glucocorticoid. What is a glucocorticoid R is a steroid. Everyone must connect your self glucocorticoid. When they give you, patient is taking glucocorticoid number 26 or mineral corticoid. <coughs> what is their last word is? Zone or salon. Prednisone. What is prednisone? A steroid. Are we clear? So what is the steroid's last word is? Zone and salon. Now, when we are saying glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid, Tell me what gland is producing your steroids? What <coughs> gland is producing your steroids? Very good, adrenal gland. You all know Cushing, right? You all remember the word Cushing? Yes. And Cushing is what? Remember the word moon face and buffalo hum. Why? Because they have more uh, steroids. And Addison is opposite to <coughs> Cushing. So I want you to highlight that word. I will be going on a little bit endocrine system later. But as we are moving, which patient are you going to give a steroids? Number one, you don't have a steroids in Addison patient. Are we clear? Cushing is too much of a steroids. I want you to add their word. When I'm going to go endocrine, I will be talking about adrenal gland. Adrenal gland is producing your glucocorticoid, and you cannot do your question or your subject if you don't know glucocorticoid. Is the hormones which is coming, is a steroid which is coming from what gland? Adrenal gland. What part of adrenal gland we are getting that is the cortex. There are two parts in adrenal gland. Is the word is called? Cortex, C-O-R-T-E-X. Believe me or not, you got to memorize this for all your exam. Adrenal, cortex gland, the word is called glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid. So if you know your glands, endocrine is not hard. If you know, what is the function of the gland? What is the function of adrenal gland is producing the steroids? What are the steroids the gland is producing? Glucocorticoid and mineral corticoid. But in your question, patient is given glucocorticoid, mean patient is given what? A steroid. Patient is Addison. Question, what drug do you give them? Mineral corticoid. Half of your answers are Addison disease. What drug? Because they don't have steroid. What do you give them? Maybe your answer is mineral corticoid. Now, let's remember, is adrenal gland, everyone knows, is producing what hormones? Glucocorticoid and 
mineral corticoid. Any question? Now I'm going in a question with the drug. Your patient is admitted. Patient is taking glucocorticoid. What does it mean? Patient is taking a steroids. Now what is your responsibility? We will go on when we are giving. So what is the ending word? You don't know a lot of drug, but what do you, even they're giving you a steroids inhaler. You don't remember what inhaler, but if you're looking at steroids, the end word would be zone and salon. And that is your a steroids. Now I will move on. When you give your patient a steroids, what do you monitor for them? What happened? The steroid lower your body resistance. And what do you monitor? Infection. Highlight that word, infection. Are you going to place that patient, somebody who has pneumonia or somebody who has a bad infection who's taking steroids for four months? No. Why? Because they're resistant. Patient is coming with Cushing. They have high steroid. Are you going to put that patient in with somebody with infection? No. Where do you put Cushing patient? Reverse isolation. <coughs> so underline the word infection. Underline the word is bleeding. When you have a steroid or you're giving your patient steroid, remember they're going to be risk for what? Bleeding. How do you give your steroids? With food. Doctor has ordered prednisone. See how we are connecting? Doctor has ordered glucocorticoid for your patient or prednisone. What is the best time you give them? Remember, I will have in the next line, give in the morning. You are taking steroids once a day. The best is to give them effectively and once a day in the morning. And how do you give your steroids? Just like aspirin with what? With food. Do not give any patient who has history of bleeding. Patient, do not give them who has ulcer. Why? Because they are already bleeding. See how your questions are going to be. There is no straight question. There would be, you got to think about your answers and see, patient came in and they are asking you, where do you put this patient? Where do we put this patient? Somebody who doesn't have infection and maybe a separate room you are taking. What are the next risks for your patient? Now maybe one answer. Doctor has ordered a steroid. What are you turning this patient? You keep on giving steroid, they're turning into Cushing. So your answer would be what? Remember, Addison has low steroids, Cushing has more steroids. Any medication you're giving more a steroid, what will happen? Your maybe only one answer. You are giving a steroid. What are you monitoring this patient? This patient is going into what? Turning into Cushing. Are we clear? So steroids, you're turning into Cushing. A steroids causing bleeding. A steroids causing what? Infection. Your questions are going to be based on this knowledge. Next is hyperglycemia. Patient is telling you, I'm not a diabetic patient. I'm not diabetic. But doctor has ordered prednisone. And my sugar, they have put me on insulin. Your answer would be your steroids. When you're taking a steroids, what happened? The sugar goes very high. You don't have to be a diabetic. But steroids, it increasing your sugar level. So what do you monitor when you're giving a steroid? Your answer would be blood sugar. Maybe answer would be insulin. Maybe answer would be hyperglycemia. So what happened when you are giving your steroids, you are turning your patient into what? Cushing. I will write down what is high in Cushing and you write down and this will help you a lot. So what would be increasing in Cushing here is number one, sodium. They will have high sodium, high sugar and their blood pressure goes high. What is low here is potassium and what is low here, <coughs> calcium. If you write down and circle the word sugar. So this is in Cushing, but you are turning your steroids when you're giving, if you have too much of steroids, you're turning into Cushing. So what would be high here? Sodium. What is high here? Sugar. 
What is low here? Potassium. What is low here is calcium. Now you watch, all your questions will depend. What do you monitor your patient when you're giving steroid and says hyperglycemia? What are you turning your patient here into Cushing? What do you monitor here? Low calcium. What, what happened to your patient who is taking for five months a steroids? What are their risks for? Underline the word fracture. What do you teach your CNA when you are giving a steroids? What do we teach the CNA when we are giving steroids? Very careful in turning and moving and ambulation and colloid and assist your patient in ambulation. There's nothing else. That's all they're asking you. Why? Because the calcium is low. Everyone is okay. What is low here? Calcium. What is high here? Sugar. What is their risk for? Bleeding. You will not be able to do your question. Very important this section is. And everyone remember, you're turning. What is the last word is here? Is the zone and salon. And why do you give like you're giving in the morning? And don't stop all of a sudden. What will happen when you stop all of a sudden? Answer may be, it may affect adrenal gland. Maybe answer would be, you will turn into, you will go into Addison. What is Addison? No, low steroid. And what Addison can cause? Crisis. They're going into shock. I will write down opposite to this is Addison. And what is in Addison is here. They have low sodium, low sugar, low blood pressure, and potassium goes very high and calcium goes high. They're going in shock. They have no sugar. Potassium goes high, which is bad on the heart. So let's just memorize simple way. Now, this is important. If you write down, this is your Cushing here, and this is Addison, is opposite. You're giving a steroid. Addison patient has low steroid, and you are treating them by giving steroid. Now, steroids are not only given to treat Addison. We are using steroids to treat every patient. Why? When they're in acute attack, acute pneumonia, acute skin problem. Why? Because it reduces the inflammation in the body. So why do we give a steroids at there? to reduce inflammation. And what is the best time you give? In the morning. What do you teach patient who is taking a steroid? Don't stop. What do we do? We taper that medication. Because otherwise, what will happen? Patient is going into what? Addison crisis. Maybe they didn't give Addison word. What gland would be affected? Adrenal gland. And patient is going into shock. And patient, what would be shock means is they're dropping the blood pressure. Their sugar is going to be no sugar, no salt in their body, and potassium will keep on going up. So that goes in glucocorticoid. Now, next one, 27, is statin. A statin or vastatin is your cholesterol medication. What is your cholesterol medication? Our ending word, a statin. And Lipitor. And it's lowering the cholesterol. You have a lot of side effects, but I want everyone must highlight the word muscle weakness or muscle tenderness or muscle atrophy word. When the muscles are getting weaker, patient says, I cannot walk. I'm having a lot of leg pain, cramping, anything with the muscle, you must notify. Yes, you do have other side, muscle cramping, it says, constipation it can cause, and other, but everyone must know the side effect is the muscle cramping, muscle pain, you must notify immediately. And what do you check before you give cholesterol medication? On third line, liver enzyme liver function test. If they give you a question, patient has hepatitis, a patient has liver cirrhosis, they can give them. The liver is already damaged. So what do you check when you're giving cholesterol medication? Before you start, they must check liver. 
Even they're giving every month, they must check liver and they must check their cholesterol level to see if it is working or not working for your patient. So that's cholesterol. And what is the ending word is? A statin. And they may give Lipitor, may, give, may say patient is scheduled for statin drug for the triglyceride or cholesterol level is very high. What medication you will give? Zocor is also is there, another medication. And the word is called really, the pharmacist and the book, we use the word, it says Zocor, it says Robidomyelosis. Robidomyelosis is in the, under Zocor, it says Vestatin 27 and the bottom line. And the third or fourth word is rubidomyelosis. That means muscle vesting, a muscle. But in simple word, anything with muscle, you pick up your answer. Okay. Next is anesthesia or anesthetic is your depravine and it causes sedation. Parkinson medications are. What is your Parkinson medication? Can be artane and also extra pyramidal symptom, you can use cogentin. So you have both word here. Cogentin is the drug for Parkinson and EPS. So cogentin is a common drug because what is EPS? They are shaking like Parkinson patient. So we can use cogentin to control the EPS as well as you are controlling for there is the movement and Parkinson patient and anti-Parkinson medication underlying dopamine. What do you monitor? Highlight the word hypotension. Hypotension. It lowers the blood pressure. Anti-emetic medication for vomiting. What is for vomiting? Underline the word uh, is hypotension. Cinemet is your medication. Parkinson, dopamine is medication and you have cogentin. But cogentin, I said, also used for EPS. Antiemetic medication are Zofran is your medication. And why do you give Zofran for nausea and vomiting? And you give Zofran IV for chemotherapy patients. A lot of patients who are going for chemotherapy, what do they feel? Very sick, vomiting. And so before they give chemotherapy, they can give them this medication. Anti-inflammatory medication, like aspirin, I said. Another drug, azulfadine. Doctor has prescribed azulfadine, that's inflammatory. You can use it anywhere, it's a, like anti-inflammatory medication, but a lot of for your stomach, for bowel inflammation, colitis patient has. And what do you teach the patient? Complete full course and also write down increase Fluid. You have increased fluid. Highlight that word and full course. Everyone is okay. Azulfadine is what? Anti-inflammatory medication. Nephrotic medication means is check the kidney, check the creatinine. Number 33 is for your patient with them is are on chemotherapy. Side effect, alopecia, and affect the cell body cell that grows rapidly normal and malignant cell. Now what is chemotherapy? Patient says, why do I lose my hair? Because what is chemotherapy is doing? Damaging the good and bad cell. And that's why they lose, but it will come back and that's temporary. Radiation therapy question are the skin care. I will talk about that. There is two kinds of radiation, external, Radiation, when they give you external radiation, highlight the word skin care. What do you do in skin care? If you are washing or giving a bath, remember don't rub too hard. What is the best word is? Pat the skin. So add the word patting is good. Tell them not to go out in the sun on the skin care. And also, why? Because skin is very much is raw, like they are more excoriation. So don't want them to go out in the sun. No lotion, no cream, unless the doctor has ordered. External radiation, do not wash the area. I'll just finish this line, then we'll take a break. And in the internal radiation, time spent. Patient has internal radiation means that in their body, they implant it. And what do you keep them? Remember, a strict isolation. Close the door. Patient is in bed rest. 
how long do you spend that time is only 30 minutes. Door must be closed. No children and no pregnant person should go in the room. So I will stop here, even we are early, but that's okay because we didn't take break.